All right, let's <laughs> let's bring on our boy Anthony Murphy from Bucks on Deck. Here is Starbucks on Deck. Anthony, welcome to the show once again. What's going on, guys? You got it. Another, see it. another fantastic morning. Huh? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. So, so Murphy, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. let's just let's just get right to it. Before we kind of dive in on on the system here, let's mm-hmm. let's kind of we brought you on. You have been watching all of these minor league games. We have not. Um, mm-hmm. We've just been seeing the highlights, right? Yeah. Um, is Henry Davis any different today than he was a month ago? Um, I when whenever I saw the the news come of it last night, I um. I was a little shocked that they would pick now to do it because like he, he, he didn't have a bad week this past week, but he, he did strike out 40% of his plate appearances. So like you talk about like the strikeouts are like technically down. So like this week wasn't like, like he, like he made some good contact, you know, he hit some doubles and hit a home run and, and, and all that whatnot, but he also struck out quite a bit too. So I thought, I thought the timing of it was a little, I mean, you know, it's still, what is it, like 22 games that, that you said he's played down there. So I'm sure if you like poke and prod at little numbers and stuff like that, you could probably find a lot of stuff that's still kind of like, eh. But I, I just I just thought it was kind of a weird, it was kind of weird timing to, to call him up after that when, you know, that's the kind of the issue that he he had in the majors. And, and now he kind of had a rough week of that in, in the minors. And maybe that's, maybe it's one of those things that ideally maybe you, see him have a week like that and then you you give him another week to see how he adjusts to that to see if he can kind of counter the rough week and if he has it if he follows up with the strong week after that then maybe you look at calling him up but they kind of like okay well i guess i guess they've seen they've obviously seen what they wanted to see from him and and that was enough to 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 get get him the call i mean he's he's hitting the pitches he's supposed to hit he's hitting them them hard like you can question, like he's a 24, 25 year old former first overall pick college player in AAA, where, like you guys have said, the level of competition doesn't look overly competitive now to where a lot of these guys that have very much have a reason to to be dominating, they're 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 dominating. You know, Jake Lamb's a 30 year old former All Star. He, he's playing well. G1 Bay, he's had experience in the majors. So, like, you would probably expect some success from him. Nick Gonzalez, another 24, 25 year old former first overall pick. Obviously, that's translating a, a, a lot better um, coming back up. So, I mean, I guess right now they, they, they're just like, I guess maybe they're just thinking, okay, well, it worked for Nick Gonzalez. Maybe, maybe the time down there worked for, for Henry Davis. I think the, I don't think there's ever really a, a stretch to where Nick Gonzalez was striking out like like this. Um, so I, I guess I guess we're just gonna have to see. Like you said, AAA pitching and major league pitching are just two completely different things. You I I can come on here and say that like okay, well he was really struggling with elevated fastballs and he's hitting elevated fastballs really well down in AAA, but like 90, 90 miles an hour is a lot different than than the stuff he's gonna face in in the majors so yeah i guess that was that was like my gonna be my main question is <clears throat> this offseason he really got a lot better with breaking balls like he yeah. he's not chasing breaking balls anymore that wasn't his problem the first month of the mm-hmm. year the problem was he couldn't catch up to a to a fastball he couldn't catch up to a major league caliber fastball mm-hmm. and so i guess that's just from from watching him for you know a month now in triple a there, there are major league fastballs in AAA, like they exist. Yeah. So, so I guess, how did he look against those ninety five and up, as opposed to like the lower stuff? Like, how how did he he's, look against that stuff? He, like he he's he certainly had his moments, and I don't think I think from the the what I've seen of him, I wouldn't have said he was that far off from maybe giving him another shot. Like, I, I probably would have, like me personally, probably just gave him like like I said, like. Maybe gave gave him this week, this upcoming week, to see how he kind of responded to last week with the strikeouts. And if you know, you know in, in the minors, we, you, you see it all the time. There, guys just have those kind of weeks where it's they just can't hit anything. You know, it's, it's part it's part of the plan, part of the part of the 
whole thing of getting better. And, you know, sometimes when you're working on something very specific, there's a reason why you're working on this thing very specific. So sometimes it, you just don't do very well at that specific thing for a week. And that could have just been what this past week was, you know, you just had a, a down week. And if you came back and responded well to it, then, then yeah, yeah. I, I think there's not too much. There wasn't there. I don't, think this was ever supposed to be like too long of a thing of him down there just because it's major league pitching that he's struggling with and only to an extent can you work on that kind of stuff in triple a when it's a whole different level that you're having issues with so i don't think it was i, I could i saw this more as like maybe just like a reset period kind of thing just go down here match a couple balls get a little bit of confidence probably don't have to tweak it's not going to be enough time to tweak too much in, in your swing and in, in in your game overall and stuff like that just maybe add a little confidence clean a little clean a couple things up and then come up and just give it give it another shot at this point and i thought i think i think maybe it's a week or so a little early but like the pirates obviously they're they have a lot more consistent eyes on this more guys on it and they saw something they liked and figured it's time. That makes sense. Yeah. And I guess something to point out in this week, he had back-to-back games where he struck out three times, yeah. uh, struck out another game twice. And then before that, he only struck out two or more times in just four games. Yeah. So yeah, the strikeouts definitely were up this week. And I guess to your point, this is something we had talked about with, you know, Henry Davis, like this is a guy who's just simply never failed, right? Like he has just, Everywhere he's gone, he's been basically the best guy. Uh, yeah. And his first time he failing was in the majors. So, like, to your sense, I guess if you're going to look at it as, like, a failure, like, this week was probably, like, the biggest failure of his AAA career, mm-hmm. uh, striking out 40% of the time. So, it's like, so how do you respond from that failure, doing it in AAA, and then once you've conquered that, okay, you know what, let's bring you to, to the majors. So, I guess yeah. I see that aspect as well. But, um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steel City DW Stuff. asks, you know, do we know if Davis made any ob- uh, observable changes to his swing, or maybe is this just, you know, a confidence builder? It does look like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've been watching a lot more, but it does look like he's a lot quieter. Like there was a lot of moving parts in his swing, mm-hmm. especially, you know, coming into this season, uh, mm-hmm. just moving his hands around, moving his body around. He does seem to be quieter now, like not moving yeah. around as much. Yeah, you could see, you could see some like little tiny little differences in it. And I, I guess, I guess the, um, you want to make like a, a joke at it or whatnot. He's getting hit by a lot more pitches again. So, yes. so maybe, maybe, maybe whatever he's going back to whatever he was doing beforehand that, that allowed for that kind of stuff. Um, but like I said, I, I wasn't, I wasn't really planning on this happening this early. This, this was something I was going to like tackle like this week and stuff like that. I had some videos saved up from, from like last year that of, of him hitting in, in the minors. And I was going to go through like today since everybody's off and kind of, um, and kind of go through what he's been doing so far this week and see if I can really pick up any kind of notable differences and stuff like that. But they obviously made the call a little bit. <laughs> they they jumped on it and go, went and called him back up. But you could notice you can notice it, like you said, Jim. It's a little quieter. Um, I think some people saying he's like a little more upright or something like that as well, too. So, got it. So he's at least right, well, trying something different. Well, enough Henry Davis. That's 30, 30 minutes of Henry Davis here. So um, we're we're excited to see him back up. Hopefully, obviously, like I said, this is a big mm-hmm. this is a big call up. Pirates need them. They could really use them. Like Donardo, you mentioned, the offense is playing a lot better right now, so there's not as much pressure on him. I, th- I think, which hopefully that can help. Like you can just shove him, you know, seventh or eighth in the order, and say, "Hey, just go, just go be you." Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but yeah, Tuesday, Henry Davis back up. Um, all right, let's dive into the rest of the system here. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about a couple guys who. Who shined this week? Who what do you what do you got for us, Murphy? So this weekend was kind of fun. And I'll bring this up too, because you know, doom and gloom kind of stuff. That Pirates win on Saturday, I think they won the Saturday game, right? Was yeah. from Friday on the only win in the entire system. Hmm. For Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 
that Pirates went the Pirates minor league system went 0 and 16, 0 and 14 from Friday on. So all right. All right. Yeah, that was that was a lot of that was a lot of fun to watch over the weekend. Um, but there, you know, there are some some guys that stood out. You know, Matt Gorski, he's still hitting pretty well. He had three home runs over the past week. Um, I guess right now it's he, he, he was definitely, I know we've talked about him before, but he definitely a guy that I was kind of worried about buying too much into this year, just because he was going to be playing in Greensboro. But Charles McAdoo had 10 hits over the week, over last week, um, three doubles, a couple stolen bases, batted over 500. Like he's just, he he's just shown he's well beyond anything that you can throw at him in, in high A. And I, I, like I said, I'm trying. I tried not to get too bought into him, but like he he was a guy that like when we did like the book, like he was just outside of my top fifty. Like mm-hmm. the, right now, we're working on our the updated site rankings that should be out like either later this week or early next week. And oh, like, nice. He's he's up up there now. He he's he's worked his way up there pretty pretty good. Um, just showing a lot of power. Um, has 10 steals as well. He's playing a lot better defensively. Like my, my biggest thing with him was I had no clue where he was going to play defensively. Like he, he was a second baseman in, in college. Okay. Maybe there, they played him a little bit at first base. They played him at third. They played him in the outfield a little bit. He's settled pretty well in at third base. He's made some pretty good play. Uh, the, they were in Asheville last week. Asheville doesn't have a stream, so I didn't get to see anything, but like, even going back before, he's played a lot better at third base than I really feel like I, I expected with it. I just kind of figured he'd be like a second baseman, left field. He, he's got a hit to get to the majors kind of kind of player. Yeah, and just he's done nothing but there's the swing and miss is way up in this in the system in ge- in general. Uh, he's one of the few guys that has like a swing and strike rate under ten percent right now. Uh, just he's doing everything well, and it's just been. Every week I kind of wait. It's like, okay, well, is he going to come down to earth a little bit or or this kind of – and he's just hits and hits and hits and hits. So. Well, we, we all know the, the infamy of Charles McAdoo. It certainly brought intrigue to me. Uh, but, yeah, like <laughs> when he was drafted, that week he had yeah. the six-hit game, two-home run, eight RBI. <laughs> you know, he came into the system just hitting literally right away. Um, yeah. So so yeah, little not laser focused on him. I don't think he's like a big time prospect, but certainly someone's like, all right, let's watch this guy. And I mean, uh, he was a he was a preseason All American his last year in at San Jose State too. So like he's like and, and like I didn't even like really you know he he, he was drafted thirteenth, fourteenth round, something like that. So you know college hitter drafted like that. And you're just like okay, well he'll. He'll, he'll play in Bradenton all year next year. He'll maybe get to Greensboro and like, he'll make some noise in Greensboro just because like, I mean, he's a college hitter and, but he's right. done nothing but hit and he's making contact when other people aren't making contact and he's fielding well. He's showing like, he's showing everything, everything that you would want and, he said, "At some point, at some point, they're going to want to start shuffling the rosters around, get some, get some guys up to face better competition." And like he, he's right at the top. That I feel like there's nobody holding. If you're talking, if you're talking about him at, th- at third base, there's no one really holding him. It, you know, holding him back and at the, on the Altoona roster. I mean, even if you want to get him other, he could play other positions too. So nice, but I like it. Yeah, no, I mean he's he's done nothing but hit since coming into the organization. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good to see it at Greensboro. Obviously, Greensboro is Greensboro is a you know a little bit easier place to hit, but yeah. uh, I mean he's he's dominating the competition. It's yeah, and it, and it's not like yeah. he's just hitting. It's not like he's just hitting home runs and and he's not doing anything else either. It's yeah. not like he and he's not like selling out for those home runs and stuff like that. He's showing like a complete all around well-rounded kind of approach that should obviously should translate going forward kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. N- nice to see him do well. I said, that's a 13th overall pick. So yeah, if you can get, if you can get anything out of a 13th over a 13th round pick, like let's, mm-hmm. 
even if he just ends up being a, a utility guy, right. Who, who yeah. can bounce around a few places like that's, that's a win. So, okay. Um, who, who else we got? Who else we got? So digging down a little bit into the, the complex, the guy who I feel like is continually impressing. And like, speaking of getting like a shot at a different level, uh, your Donnie De Los Santos is just, just still playing really well. He struggled a little bit when at the beginning of the season, he struggled a little bit when I was there, um, had some pretty bad at bats, but like, you just don't see those anymore from him. Um, what is it? He had six hits. He walked five times and he's just going crazy on the bases right now. He stole five bases last week. I think he's up to like 12 to 14 ba- stolen bases right now. Um, 14, yeah. had 13. He had a game yeah. where he um, had four in a game. Like they're just, they're just running crazy down there in, in, in the complex right, right now. Um, and he's just, just putting solid at bat after solid at bat together. And, he struggled a lot when he was with Bradenton last year. And part of me wondered if he was, it got to a point to where he was just tired because it was late in the season when he came up and had just turned 18 really. And, you know, it's a different level that, le- you know, that, that jump in competition can be fairly um, wide, especially for like an 18 year old. So just wonder if like that, that whole experience kind of just got the best of him and stuff like that. Or he was trying too hard to, um, to make something happen at, at a point and just like everything just fell apart for him at that point. Was it yeah. Nola brought up a good point like this season that he was maybe trying to, he was trying too hard to swing his way back into Bradenton. And that's why we saw a lot of like bad swings early on and stuff like that. And someone finally kind of spoke and say, Hey, just, just do your thing and you'll get back there kind of, kind of stuff. And ever since then, that's when it's kind of clicked with him, but he's a, he's a fantastic fielder really good defensive player he he made that like Derek Jeter jump throw in the hole kind of thing while I was down there had everyone like ooing and on and stuff like that it's like he's an incredible defender no doubt he could probably stick at second at shortstop um just just doing everything everything right now it's just been really impressive so far to see like the the next step for him kind of thing yeah I um I'm a big Yordani De Los Santos guy. It was it was kind of interesting seeing his numbers last year not live up to mm-hmm. kind of what what I would have expected. So I mean to see him go down back to the complex league and do what he's doing is is nice. Um he's one of those guys, and I, I tweeted this last year when I watched him, but I saw him in Bradenton, and, and this was when he was struggling too. But when you're when you're watching lower level games like that, I feel like you just you can quickly point out like who the most talented individuals are on the field. Like there are guys who shine heads and shoulders above the rest. Right. Mm -hmm. And like when I was watching Bradenton, your Donnie De Los Santos was one of those guys where it was just like, you can just tell this guy is better than, than everyone else. Um, And I said, the numbers weren't really reflecting that, but just like from a, from a pure tool standpoint, like he had it all. Like when his bat hit the baseball, it was louder than everyone else's, Mm -hmm. right? Like just like stuff like that, little things like that, where that the baseball makes a different noise when your Donnie De Los Santos swings, as opposed to these other people. Um, That's, that's a cool thing about those lower levels that I really, really like. And yeah, it's, it's good to see what he's doing now. I am, interested I, I i don't do they keep him in the complex all year round before bringing him back up to Bradenton? do you do you move him back to Bradenton? because it doesn't seem like it's much competition for him right now i i was in the boat that like maybe at first maybe just let it ride out the entire year uh because like what they they end like in july now and then that still gives you like a month or so in in Bradenton. but like there, there comes a point like you said like it's it's not really, it's, it's starting to get to the point where it's not really competition for him anymore. He's just, and this, there was times even last year to where like, you know, I, I would talk to like Eric, Eric Berglund on, on Twitter and we'd go back and forth and stuff like that. And he said every game that he'd go to your at 18 years old was the best player on the field, like hands down. Mm-hmm. And, and now again, it's even, it's even more obvious. Like he at 19, like, this is the best player on the field. And like you said, you could just look at him and, and the way he makes contact with the bat and defensively and just 
just everything about him is just this this guy has it and and, and like he's just better than everyone here so i i don't know how much longer you 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 keep him there but like it's it's close. I would have to think it's close before they give him another shot. Maybe they wait till like the All Star break or something like that. They're not mm-hmm. too far off from that, and um, and then try it from there. So, yeah. Um, how about pitching? It's a real real so, quick 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 pitching primer for the week. So there was um, I, I would throw you know Bubba Chandler obviously came back. He looked he looked better control wise, like command wise, everything looked better. The stat line wasn't like the the prettiest of things and all that. I think him throwing 75 pitches off the bat kind of shows that maybe it probably wasn't too much to be like worried about. Um, and even even that. that if it kind of yeah. you know I think they I think it was it uh, someone on Twitter mentioned that it was like a previous surgery or something like that he had that was that was bugging him. Um, and even then, I, I don't think like a week off to kind of reset was the worst idea for him, anyways. And you can kind of see that it came back. Everything started, everything looked better than it had been before and, and stuff like that. So it was a good step for him. Um, I don't know how they're going to manage him this week, but he did pitch on Wednesday. And generally, as they slide everyone up, he should be in line for like the Tuesday, Sunday thing. So that would be a good test. Like I said, I don't know if that's what they're going to go with on it. I mean, they could still pitch him Tuesday and then just not pitch him Sunday or pitch him a lot less on Sunday. But um, mm-hmm. If he's already thrown seventy five pitches right off after a week off and stuff like that, I don't I don't think there was ever too much to to worry about. Yeah, yeah, that's comforting. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. It. <clears throat> but okay. There wasn't so Bubba there, back. Yeah, there there wasn't too much. Like I, I think one guy that's that's worth highlighting because he's had a really good year, and I guess like the theme so far have been guys that are kind of dominating the competition at their at and. He's a little bit of an older guy for the for the level. Um, he pitched there last year, but Derek Diamond has been off to a really good start in Greensboro. And we talk about Greensboro not being the most ideal place for for pitchers and stuff like that. Um, he has an ERA under three right now. He threw five innings, struck out seven last week, and they're playing in Asheville. And I think if there is one stadium in that at that level that is more hitter friendly than Greensboro, it would probably be Asheville. And he threw five innings of one run baseball, struck out seven. It's a good sign. He's pitching really well. He was a guy that I was really interested in when they drafted him. I saw like some old high school video of him, and there was a lot of stuff there then. You know, he got dropped out of the rotation at Ole Miss his last year there. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm a big Derek Diamond guy. Um, <laughs> And, and I, when I talked to Robbie Hammock, I asked him if there's anyone who kind of stood out to him. him. This was when Hammock was the uh, manager in Greensboro last year. I asked him, like, who kind of stood out to him that didn't really get a lot of talk, like, national-wise. And he, he mentioned Derek Diamond just because of his pure pitch ability. Like, he's a guy who knows how to pitch. And just based off on his – that he felt like he could pitch like a very long time, maybe not like at the absolute highest level, but like even as like a, a depth guy at triple a that can come up every now and again and contribute, but like pitch ability wise, he just like raved about, about it. And we're kind of seeing it this year with him. He's looked good. He's missed, missed the first part of the season um, with an injury back. Now they've slowly worked him into the rotation and I, I I feel at this point the only reason he's not in Double A is because like where really do you put him right now in in Double A? Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Derek Diamond. Um, mm-hmm. He started three games so far this year. He's given up just one run in his three starts. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Not bad. He's looked really good. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Diamonds look good. There wasn't like a lot of theme. It's a lot of younger, lower level guys. I wish we'd be talking more about some double and triple A guys, but it is what it is. It's the Pirates farm system right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a there's definitely a a gap. I feel like Um, there. I mean, there's some guys who like in in double A that have double A wasn't the the greatest. Ashcraft had another good start. Chase Bowen finally had a uh, 
a pretty solid week down there in double A. I think um when I talked to Bowen last year, he was him and I, I had mentioned it when Sammy Siani got promoted that I thought maybe Chase Bowen might get things going because they were they are like really close. They were really tight and they push each other like really hard to to be better. And, and like Bowen mentioned, like once they kind of got reignited again in Greensboro, like last year, like the year prior, that like they both it started to kind of click for them a little bit. They went and played um, winter ball together in Australia a couple of years ago. So I kind of thought that maybe Chase Bowen can string together some like a nice little streak when Siani got to double A as well. And he probably had his best week that he's had um, this season. So cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Murphy, thank you again for joining us this morning, getting up early and talking about pirates minor league baseball with us um if you haven't make sure you subscribe to the bucks on deck Substack. um you also have a podcast with nola where if you're interested in more more prospect stuff diving in deep your uh, your podcasts come out every tuesday so make sure you, you check that out the bucks on deck podcast uh and, and follow murphy on twitter you know all that all that good stuff and YouTube. He's got a YouTube channel. Yeah, um, yeah. I got a, I've been slowly yeah. uploading all the video I've gotten on um, from when I was in Florida, mainly because my phone keeps telling me it's full of storage, so I need yeah. to get it off the phone. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, Anthony, Anthony, Mur I think it's just Anthony Murphy, right? Yeah, and yeah. It, uh, yeah. It, it's just a ton of prospect videos. So, yeah, check it out. Yep.